Hey everyone, Simon here with Top Tennis Training and in this video I want to show you 5 ways to win more matches in tennis. Now we all want to win more matches, we want to beat our main competitors, we want to win more tournaments and we want to feel like we're getting better when we're competing. If you use these 5 methods I can guarantee that you'll boost your performance when you are competing and help you win more matches. <laughs> Now the first method is all about being ready, so preparing properly for the match. This means from the very first point you're ready to compete properly and start the match off strong. Now if you're someone who doesn't warm up normally, if you come on the match court, those first four or five games you're actually still warming up. Your body isn't ready to compete, you're not in a groove with your strokes. So those first four or five games you're at a massive disadvantage, especially if your opponent has warmed up properly and they're already in a groove. You might be down five love before you're actually ready to start playing the match on your terms. And we want to take that away. We want to make sure that from the very first point, I'm ready to compete and I'm in the match right from the beginning. I want to feel that I'm giving myself the maximum chance to perform well from the very first strike. Now it depends on your time, it depends on the situation you're in. Sometimes I've traveled to tournaments and all the, the courts have been busy with players playing matches. So there's nowhere to hit and I simply have to go and shadow my swings. I have to go and do some skipping, some jogging and I'll do a little bit of visualization before the match. But in an ideal world, this means that around two hours before you play the match, you have a half an hour hit. And in that session, you're, you're going around 60 or 70% of your full intensity, you're not trying to kill yourself, you're not trying to crush every ball, you're simply building that consistency, you're getting your tempo right, you're getting the timing right, and you're grooving your strokes. Now after that half an hour hit, you come off the court, you have a meal, so something like a plate of pasta, a plate of rice, or even a sandwich. Then you'll go and loosen up your body. So this might be anything that you feel tight, so maybe you've played a match the day before and your legs are extremely tight. You'll go out and stretch them, you might use something to massage them a little bit just to get the knots out of those muscles. Then we want to find a place where we can go and sit, a quiet place, and just use that time to visualize how we want to actually build points and play the match when we get out on the match court. And when you visualize, it's almost like you're tricking your mind into thinking that you've actually played a match beforehand, so when you do get out on the match court, everything is a lot easier to deal with and you're actually in that groove right from that first point. Now right before the match, you'll want to have about a 10 or 15 minute warm up. This could be a bit of jogging, this could be skipping, some resistance bands, and some shadow swings so that when you go out on the court, you're ready to swing the racket at high speeds and reduce your risk of injury. Now of course, if you're rushed for time and you don't have access to a practice court, you can simply shadow your forehand and backhands, shadow some volleys, do a few footwork drills, and shadow some serves. So you're actually swinging your racket as if you're playing and at the same time you have that same focus when you're playing the match. So that split step, hitting the shot and then recovering. This will make it much easier for your body to switch on when you start the match compared to if you do nothing at all. So now that you're warmed up and hopefully you're already mentally in the match, you know how you want to construct points, you know how you want to play your service games. Now when you step out on the match court, the first step is uh, starting the match off in a positive and consistent way. Too often I'll see club players stepping out on the match court and they go for maximum power from the very first shot. So they're hitting their serves at full speed. They're going for winners from the first couple of shots. They're not building any timing, they're not building that tempo, and they're definitely not building that consistency. And this costs many players matches because of the way they start the actual contest. That's certainly not how we want to actually approach the first few games. Those first three or four games, you want to take the power off reduce your power to around 75% and build up that consistency, that timing and that tempo in the actual tennis match. If those first few games you just build points, you construct points, you stay consistent, you play high percentage tennis, you're building a good rhythm to build on for the entire match, 
and you're actually getting yourself into the contest and hopefully if your opponent is someone who likes to go for their shots they might be missing and you might grab an early break and an early lead so by starting the match out in that consistent way you're setting yourself up well for the rest of the match and you won't actually have to worry about increasing the power because your body will feel when it's time to go for more and you'll actually start to feel like okay now my timing is here now I have that confidence to go for more I can start hitting a little bit harder I can start going for those winners but I've actually constructed points in those first few games I've built that timing, I've built that rhythm, I've built that consistency which is key for the entire match, it doesn't matter who you're playing. So starting off the match at around 75% of your maximum power and building that consistency will give you a huge edge over most of your competition. Now within these first few games you also want to be finding out information about your opponent and this is only possible if you're actually consistent. If you're going for winners and trying to force the point you're not actually finding out any information about your opponent. If, if it's someone you've never played before, those first four games will give you a lot of information that you can then use later on in the match to actually win it. So you have to be consistent in order to test out the opponent. Do they like high balls? Do they like low balls? What kind of game do they play? And the only way to do this is by being consistent yourself. Method number three to winning more matches is finding your opponent's weakness. Now we all have weaknesses, it might be a certain shot that actually breaks down under pressure, especially in a match. It might be dealing with a particular type of ball. So for a one-hander out there, it might be dealing with those high backhands. For a player who uses an extreme forehand grip, it might be dealing with those low balls on that forehand side. So we all have weaknesses, and the quicker you can find those weaknesses in your opponent, the easier it will be for you to win that match. Now this doesn't mean that if you find that the player doesn't like high backhands, you only give them high backhands on every single shot. Because then you're actually grooving that player and after a few games they'll adapt and they'll start to deal with that type of ball. This means that on the bigger points, let's say the 30 old points, or if you have a, a game point or a break point, you then use a strategy that will exploit their weakness and then hopefully help you to win more of those big points that will be so crucial in winning the match. So how exactly do you find your opponent's weakness? You simply test out all types of shots in their game. So you test out their entire arsenal. Every type of ball that you could hit, you use it against them. So this will include giving them high forehands, medium height forehands, and low forehands. The same on the backhand side, giving them a high backhand, giving them a medium high backhand, and a low one. Giving them running shots on both sides. Changing up the spins, giving them aggressive topspin. Seeing how they deal with that type of ball giving them a flat shot, seeing how they deal with that type of ball, and then slicing the ball and seeing how they actually respond to that low slice coming at them. Oh, nice. And the way I like to think about it is, if I'm doing a lesson with somebody who I've never coached before, so a new student, the first 15 or 20 minutes, I'm not going to teach them very much because I'm going to be analyzing their game. So when we step out on the court for that lesson, that first lesson with somebody new, I'm going to be checking out everything. This means giving them high forehands, high backhands, low forehands, low backhands, running forehands, running backhands, giving them a slightly shorter ball, giving them a deep, high, aggressive topspin shot that they then push back on and seeing how they respond to each of these type of shots. All that time, I'm building up an image of this player. I'm also checking out their grip. What type of grip do they play with? What type of grip do they use on their forehand, on their backhand? Are they a right-hander? Are they a left-hander, of course? Then I'll, t I'll bring them into the net and give them a few volleys. See how they deal with a low volley. See how they deal with a ball that has no pace on it. All of these shots will be giving you information and you're storing that data almost like a computer analyzing all the numbers. So that first 15 or 20 minutes, I'm analyzing everything in their game and I'm building an image of how this player likes to play and more importantly, what they don't like to play. Now as a coach, I'd then be constructing drills and thinking about what to actually teach them for the remainder of that session. But in a match, I then use that information to exploit their weaknesses.
you have a sure ball and you approach to their backhand side, you're going to see how they deal with a high backhand when you're coming forward, or how they deal with a low slice and then coming forward. And this comes back to that method number two, which is being consistent in those first few games, because then you can actually test out everything on your opponent's side. You can even start this in the warm-up. As soon as you start hitting those first few balls down the middle, change up the pace, change up the spins, change up the heights of your shots and see how they respond. Look at their forehand grip, look at their backhand grip. When they start hitting their serve, see what kind of serve they go to time and time again and what type of spins they use when they're serving. The more you do this, the better you'll get at it and the quicker you'll find the information that you need to actually exploit the weaknesses. If you're someone who doesn't do this currently, you're missing out on a massive advantage when you're playing matches and you should certainly start doing it from today. Method four is play each point as if it's the only point in the entire match. Now this is that point by point mentality that we often hear players uh, speaking about. When we filmed with David Ferrer a few years ago, he was explaining how when he's playing a big match, he's playing each point as if it's the only one. That means he's got full intensity the entire way through the match. If he's taking each point as if it's the only point that counts, then he's always living in the moment. And this is something that we should all be trying to do when we're competing. Now, too often I'll see uh, players who, let's say they've missed an easy shot. They've had an easy forehand to put away, they've had the open court and they hit it too hard and they miss it. Instead of just losing that one point and then focusing on the next point, so regrouping and then concentrating on being in the present moment, they're actually still dwelling on the past and that one point can actually cost them three or four games and before long they've lost that set and now to come back in the match is a very huge task for them. Whereas the best players in the world and the best competitors, they're simply playing each point as if it's the only one and it's the only one that does really matter so what's happened before in the match if your opponent has hit a great shot if they've hit a couple of incredible winners you just simply clap and say too good but move on to the next point if you compete with this point by point mentality it will also increase your intensity if i'm thinking okay it's the first uh, first game of the first set i still maybe have three more sets ahead of me i might reserve some energy and not chase down every single ball and not go full out for that point. Whereas if I'm thinking this is the only point that counts, now my intensity is there, my focus is there, and I'm fully zoned in on winning that point. And this is exactly how you'll have a huge edge over most of your competition. Now a good way to do this is to build the next point in your mind before you actually play it. So you're already thinking about how am I going to build this point and execute it to give me the best chance of winning it. So when you're serving, this will be your serve plus one. So I'm going to serve down the tee, most likely the opponent will return it into this zone. So with my first shot I'm going into the space or I'm going back behind them. So I'm building that point before it actually happens and this will make me to zone in on what really counts which is the next point that I'm about to play. When I'm returning I can do the exact same thing. I could be focused on okay if they serve on my forehand I'm going to try to hit the return into that spot. If they serve on my backhand I'm going to try to return the ball into that spot. I'm going to focus on what type of spin I want to use. Will I slice the return? Will I block the return? Or will I drive it with aggressive topspin? Now this is why it's a good idea to have a towel on the court. So you put it at the back of the court, you put it near the fence. And after every point, especially the bigger points, you go to the towel and you wipe down. Even if you're not sweating that much, you still go to the towel and use that time to focus on the next point. That's why you'll see most of the pros using a towel on the court. It's not always about wiping down the sweat. It's also about having the time to think about the next point. This could also be when you're going to pick up a ball. So if it's your serve and you're going to pick up the ball, while you're walking to the ball, take your time, don't rush. Let your heart rate come down to that optimal level so you're letting your body recover in order for you to give yourself the maximum effort on that next point. And this might mean taking those 25 seconds between every single point. You have that rule, so why not use it? And why not use it to think about how you're actually going to build that point and give yourself an edge every single point. How often do club players actually think about where they're going to serve, the type of spin they're going to use and the first shot they're going to hit. This is something that you can start to implement into your game right away and it will give you a massive boost 
when you're playing matches. And method five is to fight that never give up attitude you want to have when you're stepping out on the match court. Too often, I see a lot of players almost throw the towel in as soon as they lose that first set, or if they're playing bad, they don't feel like they're hitting the ball well, they feel like it's just not their day, and they simply give up and give the other player the match without the other player having to actually fight for every single point. Now, the great thing about the scoring system in tennis is that the entire match can change just with a few points. You might be 5-2 down, and the player is serving for the match. It might be 30 all. If you get those next two points and you get the break and then you hold serve, now instead of 5-2 and two points from victory, now it's 5-4 and the pressure starts to build on your opponent and you're back in the match. So the whole momentum can change with just a few points and if you give up, you'll never have that ability to actually come back and make those drastic changes. But if you're always fighting and showing your opponent that you won't give up, that you'll be there until the very last point, then this will be a massive boost to you and hopefully this will have a, an effect on the opponent's mind and then eventually their game. If you're someone who's chasing down every single ball, if they see that they're playing someone who won't give up, they're running for everything, they're really fighting to win that match, this will slowly play on their mind and they'll think that they have to start going for more. They'll start hitting harder, they'll start going closer to the lines and you'll force them to start missing and breaking down more and more, especially as the match wears on. Now I've lost matches where I've had a match point up and I've also won matches where I've been match point down. So I know that the, the match is never over until it's finally over. Until that final moment, until that final shot has gone out or you've hit that winner, you always have to be intense. You always have to show your opponent that you're ready to fight and you're chasing down every single ball and showing them your will to win. If you can do this, if you can apply this in every single match you play, you'll have a massive boost over most of your competition because too often players are giving up and if you're the player that shows that you're never gonna give up, if you're the player that's always willing to fight, then you'll become a feared opponent and someone that nobody actually wants to play because they know even on a bad day, you won't give them anything and you'll be working as hard as ever to win that match. And that's the type of player you want to be. You want to be that fighter, you want to be that kind of Nadal style, that Ferrer style, even if you're someone who plays a completely different game style, when you are playing bad, to actually win those matches when you're playing bad, it's all about fighting and making sure that you keep the balls in time and time again so that the opponent starts to break down. So there you have it, five ways to hopefully help you win more matches and gain a massive edge over your competition. If you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and make sure you turn on the notification bell so you get notified whenever we release a new lesson. Share this video with anyone who would benefit. So if you're a coach, share it with your students. If you're a parent, share it with your kids. Or if you're someone who has a big group of tennis players that all compete, share it with them, and that will help us to grow the channel and also reach more players to help online. Signing off, Simon from TTT. All the best and see you soon, guys. Take care.